Hi everyone, today we will do legal dictation exercise number 5. So ready? Start. There is one feature which is fairly striking in this case is that the funeral of the deceased was solemnized without any information to the police and it is for this reason there appears to be neither any inquest report nor even a post-mortem report of the deceased. The circumstance may mitigate against the husband but there is nothing on record to indicate that the appellant was responsible for any such activity. The prosecution has not led any such evidence complaining about the disposal of the dead body in the aforesaid manner to establish an intent on the part of the appellant to either obliterate the evidence or otherwise destroy it. The ocular testimony of Ram Kumar PW1 and Srimati Seema Devi PW2 is totally silent in this regard. In such circumstances, any presumption against the appellant under any of the illustration of section 114 of the Indian Evidence Act would be impermissible as there is complete lack of evidence on this score. The prosecution does not appear to have concentrated on this issue which appears to be evident from the fact that the family members of the deceased including her mother-in-law had reconciled which also stands reflected in their statements made before the court. Consequently, what we find is that in the entire evidence of the prosecution, no element of men's re-arose to implicate the appellant for having intentionally murdered of the deceased. However, as indicated above, the factum of throwing the cloth soaked in kerosene causing injuries of the deceased is established from the dying declaration of the deceased. The status of the dying declaration has already been held unimpeachable by us as it is corroborated by the testimony of the Naib Tashildar PW6 Rabi Kumar and PW9 Dr. Dilip Kumar Roy. In such circumstances, we are of the opinion that the appellant had the knowledge if not the intention to the extent that her action is likely to cause death of the diseased in the ordinary course of things. The nature of the injuries and the background in which the same came to be suffered by the diseased on account of a clear overt act of the appellant convinces us to accept that the prosecution has established the offence but only to the extent as defined in part 1 of section 304 IPC. The prosecution in our opinion to that extent has succeeded in travelling the distance through its evidence from must have been to must be in the present case and the appellant had such knowledge so as to cause death when she committed the offence. There is as recorded above a complete lack of evidence beyond reasonable doubt about the intention 
of the appellant to commit murder of the first degree. Our conclusion to that extent is not an alternative opinion but the only possible view and therefore we are unable to accept the view taken by the trial court. Thank you. Please subscribe my channel Steno Star.